Die! 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 Oh, hi there. I was just playing popular first person shooter shooter. First Destiny from uh, Bungie, who are a small indie studio. Because video... What are you doing? What is this? What are you doing? Look, man, I can Wins. play whatever I want because all games are perfectly valid entertainment, and that's. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's disgusting. I told you video games were bad for you. No, this is just how I enjoy myself. Oh, the smell of it. Oh, I get it. It's just, this is an intro to the Steam Park review. To Steam Park. Yeah. yeah that's what... Steam, Steam Park. What did you think it was? I thought it was an advert for uh, Destiny, which is available now. So Steam Park is a game about vomiting robots. What criticism could we possibly have? Let's wrap this one up. Shut up and sit down. Absolutely recommend. Queen! Steam Park is a game about running a theme park for robots who come to your theme park and enjoy themselves and have a lovely time and never leave. Just like real robots, they just sort of remain always there. And it's your job as Steam Park, Theme Park Coordinator, Robot Official Person in Charge of Fun to make sure you attract as many robots as you possibly can, to make as much money as you possibly can, and also keep things as clean as you possibly can. Because when robots come to your theme park and enjoy themselves, they inevitably, as, as anybody does when they enjoy themselves in any context, release a sort of, they release release of fluid. And looking through this box for the first time, you also might start producing fluid. It's Quinn's! Because what you've got, you've got a lovely velveteen bag with a nice drawstring, drawstring full of wooden robots. You've got a lovely huge bag of wooden dice. You've got three-dimensional theme park rides where the robots will be going. You have tokens and decks of cards and so much stuff. It's immediately the kind of game where when you're playing with it, and you're putting little robots on your little theme park rides, people are gonna come in and they're gonna say, what are you playing? And you're gonna say, mum, I've told you the living room is my personal space between 8 a.m. and midnight. Yeah, there's so many board games that fail to make proper use of the third dimension, but not so steam park. It's, it's chunky. It's chunky like a really nice bar of chocolate. It's chunky like those men in that calendar that your mum left in the living room after you specifically told her that it was your space between, <sighs> look like actual rides, actual three-dimensional rides that you put actual robots on when they're enjoying themselves and, and, and chunky money tokens and, and chunky handfuls of custom dice that you get to roll all the time. And then park expansion little token things that show everything getting bigger in front of you. It's just so chunky little custom little park facilities like toilets and things. It's what a good start. The moment you open the box, you've got all these things to touch and Oops. You know what else? The manual is similarly chunkitudinous. The 10 minutes, that's all you're going to spend with it, are going to be the best 10 minutes you've spent with a manual in years. There are hand-drawn illustrations get to help you go along. You're going to learn about the denizens of Roboburg as you absorb rules. You're going to learn what to do in common rule disputes. You're going to laugh at its many, many jokes. And then you'll have absorbed the game so utterly that you could probably burn it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to burn it because we don't need it anymore. Let's... let's... Yeah? We're going to burn it. Let's, um... Yeah! How are we? Grins, look at me. We're going to burn it. Yeah! Oh, it's not lighting. No, give it to no, me. No, Do it properly. No, no, I can. Get, yeah, see. It's just, not. It's not. There we go. There we go. There. There we go. There we go. Oh. There we go. There oh, we go. Oh no, look, it's singed. It's All right, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. No, it's over. Give it to me. If we just give it to me. So, a game of Steam Park takes six rounds, which will mark with this. Adorable little robot token, and he's gonna say, Hello, I'm going down. Oh, Wins. <laughs> Uh, but in a round of Steam Park, you've got six dice, and all players are going to be rolling these six dice as fast as they can, trying to get the results they need, and then 
storing them on their piggy bank thing, probably getting inadequate results because you're all chasing after these turn order tokens, which if you're the first to grab it will make your park cleaner or dirtier if you're last. Basically, like being a freelance writer, Steam Park is a never-ending battle against filth. Uh, and then what happens is players are going to take turns using these symbols if you spend two building results, you can get a medium sized thing and you can put that down. You can spend a stand results to get a stand. You can spend visitor results to get visitors in your park. You can spend cleaning results cleaning up their mess. And finally, now bearing in mind, your plans are being muddied by this dice rolling mechanic and then double muddying things are the coal cards. These are activated with a coal result. Each player has three coal cards. Now, these all want you to do one specific thing, focus on one thing in a game about random chance. So basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a coal card and you're gonna go, all oh, right, I'll just attract visitors this turn. I'll make a ton of money. Then you'll be rolling your dice and you won't get visitors. And then you'll be looking and other people will be storing their dice and you'll say, oh, let's just build some toilets, toilets, let's go. So let's talk some more about dirt. Every die roll that you keep that has a little weird circular corner thing, symbol, it produces dirt. Every time someone comes to your park and enjoys themselves, that produces dirt. I don't really know what dirt is. The manual says that it's something that you need to constantly clean up and it's, it's clearly called dirt in the manual, but it looks like a kind of an oily thing when you actually look at the picture. But then the instructions also tell you that visitors produce it when they enjoy themselves and toilets help you manage it. So it's clearly a combination of like actual dirt and poop and, 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 and the other stuff. Anyway, you have to really manage your dirt quite a lot because it's a constant side effect of people enjoying themselves and you need those visitors to enjoy themselves and you need those rides for visitors to enjoy themselves on. And you quick re quickly realize everything is, is interdependent and dirt is inevitable. And not only is everything interdependent, space is very quickly at a premium. You see, you can't put rides of, oh dear, of different colors next to each other, just like in real life. And all these wonderful buff stands, they're really, really useful, but you can't put them next to anything or anything else either, even though you're gonna need them because the toilets make less dirt and the, the information services allow you to put different colored people on, on rides when you usually wouldn't. And then there's security. We'll explain all this in a minute, but you just, you need to have constant room all the time for every, for everything. There is not one part of Steam Park which is complex. In fact, lots of the game is eminently solvable if it weren't for the dice, if it weren't for the cold cards. In fact, let's look at how interesting getting visitors to your park is. These robots who you attract and they sit there spewing filth and money, which is how you win, for the rest of the game. It involves this velveteen pouch. Look, let's say I want to fill up this awesome, huge, spooky robot house that I've got there. That's black, so it attracts black robots. I'm gonna spend dice with people on, and I'm gonna spend, drop rather, that many black robots into this bag. That's my choice. Then, so I've dropped two black robots in here. I draw a, ah, it's black, yes, yes! And it's more tense than any dice roll. Oh, come on. It's pink, and that does nothing for me. In fact, he then leaves the bag, and that's my turn over. So not only is this really tense as a mechanic, because that's a lot of money, but also, your friends are all trying to remember what's in this bag. Unless you've got a security tent. The security tents are wonderfully useful because they allow you another chance to reach inside the bag and perhaps draw a different robot this time. Just like all the stands, they're just really good buffs and you really want all of them all the time, even if they're space eaters, even if everything is a space eater. It's all so horrifically interconnected to when you need robots, but robots need facilities, and then they yep. need rides. Yep. And then, but for that, you'll need space. Well, of course. And then during all the construction, oh, you've yes. made a load of dirt. Well, so now you need toilets, which means you need more space. You've been over this. Of course you do. The thing is, everything you do in Steam Park is satisfying. It's satisfying to do any of it, but any of it probably should have happened a turn ago because you're just busy rolling dice and panicking and trying to create a plan out of the fragments of your vision of a beautiful theme park. So you think, I'm going to do better next turn. 
And you can do that, you know? It's frustrating, but immediately the game says, ah, oh, do you want to try again? Almost like a sort of carnival ride where you throw a pear at the thing and it explodes and you get more pears. If you... And then, it's, but then it's just go again. Just go again. Or can you though? You can, can you? Because like those carnival rides with those pairs, eventually they close. And Steam Park ends after six turns. And after that sixth turn, it's, it's, it's time to open your wallet and see how much money you have and see how much dirt is built up in your park to penalise you and see if you are the best at making robots happy. Are you the best at making robots happy? Or did you get too distracted by a game? Because it's, it's so focused and so intense that you forgot that time has, has gone past. And it's... You're probably not the best at making robots happy. Because... And it's, it's almost mean to make the game that short, though, and that tight, because six turns isn't that much. And yeah, you can it's easily not... get lost in everything. And you know what? This is the interesting thing about the dirt, because you can probably think, well, I've just got to get robots in and paying money, so I'll clean up dirt later. But then what if you can't get the results you need to clean up dirt later? Because dirt is an exponential penalty and this is the great thing you have like flying too close to the sun but the sun is it's poop dirt. and your wings are Don't more poop. more more poop and so you have to clean as you go but you can't do that because you need space because, because, you're so because you need rides focused on the and game. you need rides to build to, and then robots what do I do this time but then you've made How more do dirt I robot? steam park is just lush you know from when you see the box to when you open the box to the first minute of play right through to the final minute of play shut up and sit down absolutely wreck a weight hang on we have like usually we do at least some criticism of a game well i mean do we have to this time can we not maybe embrace the philosophy that's that's expressed by these robots these pleasure-seeking robots who have just gone out there to enjoy themselves and we can we can accept that the the designers have worked hard to make a game that's if i had a that's... criticism of of steam park then it would probably be that if it was a bit more anything if it was more complicated or more simple if it had more player interaction it was more thematic anything rather than just being this middle of the road thing it would probably be someone's favorite game but as it is you know, like, I have friends I can call up and say, do you want to play, you know, Cube Quest? Do you want to play Trains? Any of the games on these shelves? And they'll say, Quentin, let's do it. But with Steampunk, it's like, that's not something people are going to come over to play, you know? They'll have a great time. But it's not an event game. I don't know. It's good enough for me. It's, I think it's a good, easy game to teach, and I think it's it's a great game for a family I mean, it's fantastic, well. and... but... It's got that wonderful thing where it's not actually very complicated. All the, all the challenge comes from the difficulty of the decisions that you have to make, and that's really, really intelligent. And I'm actually quite happy just with that. Oh, that's just great. happy with that. That's and good. that makes me really happy. And... Great. <coughs> oh, that's, that's great for you. I'm just producing so much liquid because I'm really happy. Wait, why are you producing motor oil? Why, why are we producing motor oil? Because we're happy. Yeah, you just keep shooting stuff, man. I tell you what, life is so easy since we built those board game reviewing robots. Yeah, no, it's it's. Oh, it's are you sure this is gonna work? They, we we make the video first, and then the bungees give us money for talking about how you can buy Destiny. That's how all the pros from, do it, man. From all of the shops. Did you download this edition of Destiny, Paul? Uh, I didn't, but I could on my PlayStation 4 from Sony. It's crazy. Maybe the Sonys will give us money instead. There's, Sonys Just... wouldn't give us money. They're, um, they're owned by Microsoft. Are they? What do you think is your favourite thing about Destiny? Pads turned off. Oh, people are going to know we're not really... <laughs>